Welcome to episode 219 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host. And today we're going to talk about why gratitude is the grease in the wheels. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So I am coming off a beautiful weekend in upstate New York. If you know upstate New York, you know April temperatures can be kind of volatile. You can have snow, you can have 50s, you can have what we had this weekend, which was almost 80 degrees, sunny, blue skies, no bugs, breezy. It was just absolutely gorgeous. And we just pretty much stayed home all day Sunday. Saturday, we did a little running about, a little cleaning up of our old office space where we were so that we can rent it out to somebody else. Actually spent a little time making some clothes. So if you're just on the podcast, you can't see, but I have a shirt that uh, has a clarity flag and says clarity. We did a little design. We did some vinyl cutting. We bought a press. My daughter and I, uh, we had a little fun and we made some stuff. And so I'm coming off that and I was driving in to work this morning before I recorded this podcast and thinking like, what am I going to talk about today? And my mind was um, kind of thrown back to the first company I started, Image Auto. Last week, I was in a clubhouse room where um, I was with a lot of fellow investors and my business partner, Kyle, talking about automotive state of the union and the business we're building there. And I was the guest on the, the clubhouse show and they were asking me to tell like, you know, where did I come from? Where did... Where did this company come from? And so I went back to the beginning and told the story of a lot of, included my first company, Image Auto. And, uh, and I've kind of been in that mindset over the last few days, just thinking back to the long 20 year journey it took for me to even get to this point right now in life and in business. And um, it's good, I think, to, to think back. You know, some people say, just look forward. I think we should always, always look back. We should always consider the path that it took to get us here because then you can kind of start to understand how your mindset has changed and developed. You see the progress that has been made. And one of the things my wife and I always talk about is how fast life has changed just in the chunk of a few years. And I'm not talking about COVID. I'm talking about pre-COVID. I'm talking about what happens as you build um, a life and build a career. It seems like things start to move a little faster. And it's staggering to see that only three, four, five years ago, how different life was than it is today. Sometimes it's the people that are in your lives. Sometimes it is the, the financial position you're in and the progression of what you're building, um, how it grows over time. Sometimes, mostly, I think it's the mindset that we're in and, and the mindsets that we adopt that really drive how we act, behave, and actually drive the future level of success in our lives. And I'm not just talking about financial success. I'm talking about success in life. That means relationships, your, your general feeling, your optimism about life, um, your perspective about life, uh, your hope, right? What it is that you hope for the future to be changes quite a bit as you grow. And I think as you mature, there are a lot of things in life that quality probably goes down, right? As you get older, right? Your body ages, things slow down a little bit, but life gets a lot sweeter, used to pursue all these experiences and things like that. And today, you know, a lot of people are pursuing experience. But what I found is that you get, as you move forward in life, it actually gets sweeter. And I expect, I don't know, I'm 43 years old, but I expect that when I'm 53, I'm going to say the same thing, that life is so much sweeter at 53 than it was at 43. And I think at 63, I'm going to say the same thing. And I'm like, man, I didn't know anything when I was 43. And life is insanely sweeter at 63. So that is my hope and my perspective in life, which brings me a long way to come back around to the topic today on why gratitude is the grease in the wheels. I was thinking through back um, to the first company, Image Auto, that I built and just was so uh, fortunate to have the people and the team with me um, and all the things that happened. It wasn't just me. It was a whole group of people. But I was thinking about our values as a company. And we had seven values. Seven is more than I would suggest uh, any company have these days because the attention span for seven, uh, you have to be really committed to pushing seven values down if you're going to make seven work. But I will say that we, as Image Auto, did make seven work and we did push those values down. And uh, they were this integrity, consistency, accountability, unity, gratitude, growth, and grace. Now, I want to talk about gratitude today, 
And gratitude was one that wasn't originally in there. It was originally six values. It was integrity, consistency, accountability, unity, growth, and grace. And we realized something was missing. And gratitude was something that we put in the values because gratitude is one of those things that I believe is a choice. And you can have all the other values, but unless you have a spirit of gratitude in your company, it can be really easy to fall apart. We put it in there just like insurance policies, right? When you see insurance policies and you realize like, well, that's a weird paragraph to have in there, that exception or that situation. I'm always like, yo, something is in an insurance policy because it actually happened, <laughs> right? It actually happened, which is why it's in there. So what actually happened in our company is that we realized there were people that were holding true to the values and the company culture still wasn't where I felt we needed it to be or I wanted it to be or I desired it to be. And so the fact that we can shape our company culture by putting values in place and then pointing to them constantly and talking about them constantly is, is a beautiful thing in business. It's one of my favorite things about business. So we put this uh, value of gratitude in place. And gratitude, I can't remember, maybe I remember the exact definition, but it's, it's went something like this. We choose to exhibit a grateful attitude for the opportunity we have to work alongside this team. We choose to exhibit right out of the gate Gratitude is a choice. You get to choose to exhibit and carry gratitude, even if you don't feel grateful in the moment. If you don't feel, if you don't feel grateful, that doesn't mean you can't still be grateful or act in a grateful manner. So first of all, we choose to exhibit a grateful attitude. Now, all of a sudden, when that's a value, everyone knows when I walk in today, when I send text messages, when I interact with customers, when I interact with my team, I have a choice on whether or not I'm going to exhibit a grateful attitude. The next part is really important. I think the next part is really potent. In this day and age, when um, it seems very difficult to get uh, quality people on your team, there's a labor shortage, we won't get into that right now, but for the opportunity to be a part of this team. Realizing that being a part of this team is first of all, your choice to be here. Not our choice to have you, but it is your choice to be here. And if you are deciding, choosing to be here, then you will also choose to exhibit a grateful attitude for the opportunity. Now, I know you might say, well, that's really one-sided. I know as the boss, you want everybody to do what you want to do. That's not true. As the boss, what I want everybody to do is want, to want to do it, to understand that it's a privilege to do it, to understand that the good things about the company culture, the good things that we cultivated as a company did not come free. They weren't something that you could get everywhere. And that you, at any time, if you're unhappy with the situation, you can choose to leave. And that kind of set the tone for the company that really became the grease in the wheels for a great company culture. In the midst of a really difficult job, we did hard work outside and all the elements, paint work and dent work and wheels and pulling wheels on and off vehicles, all that stuff. But guess what? We knew we could choose to be grateful and when we did that, the funny thing is when people start to do that all over, guess what? The environment gets better. And so talking about gratitude, I hope that this somehow gets into your heart today and realize whatever situation helps you realize whatever situation you have today is something that likely you are choosing. And even if you're in a situation where you didn't get all the choices, you still get to choose whether or not to exhibit a grateful attitude for the opportunity to be a part of what you're part of. Because maybe it's something where you're doing something great or if it's difficult, guess what? You have the opportunity to be grateful that your character is growing, you're becoming tougher, stronger, and you're gonna have something to give back to somebody that you're mentoring, to somebody in the future that's gonna make life, I think, a little more sweeter. I'm really grateful to have you here today for the opportunity to share with you, the opportunity for you to listen, and the opportunity for us to interact over it, either in the digital world or sometime in an event where I might see you in person. So until next time, pursue that clarity, and I'm grateful for you. We came to fight.